Thanks for joining us on Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. It's Epsom Day this weekend at Royal Randwick. Such a great day on the racing calendar. But not just for racing, it's the NRL, the AFL Grand Finals. It's a huge weekend. My beloved West Tigers, they didn't make it in the NRL, so I've got to rely on the namesake in the AFL. And Mike... Those Raiders are yours, mate. They hit the line at the end of the year about as hard as Junior Paulo's midriff, I reckon. Oh, that's really harsh. That is soft as well, but I guess at least he's hanging around, unlike Aaron Woods for your team, the True. Tigers. But don't be too harsh on the Raiders. They'll be back next year. I need them to be to get a few wins. Well, speaking of winning, it's been a good few weeks on Key Factors. We landed the big quaddy a few weeks ago. There's been some great value bets as well. A couple of big Cornellas the last few weeks. Yeah, so rewarding to get those big returns. We're all about rate of return, not strike rate on the Key Factors. Obviously, keeping our followers in the green is what it's all about. A great quaddy a couple of weeks ago, an ace high at 10 bucks last week. How good was that? He just kept lifting. Yeah, it was a great start to the quaddy. Good to see him progress down in Melbourne this spring. But look, it's, it's Everest Day a couple of weeks away. That's $10 million on the cards. It's only that $3.8 million this weekend for Epsom Day. But it's going to be a cracker out there. And this first week of the quaddy, it's shaping up as a real prelude to the Everest in a few weeks as we get into it this weekend at Royal Randwick, the first leg of the quaddy. It's the Premier Stakes over the 1,200 metres. And, well, Mike, there were 12 to begin with in the Everest. Now there's only two spots left. So could the door be open for one of these quality sprinters to sneak in that field? Yeah, maybe our tip suggests that door could be ajar. We'll have a look at that. So Group 2 for the Group 1 runners in a couple of weeks' time, 1,200 metres, fair tempo. The, the rail's true at Randwick on Saturday. The good dry conditions hopefully means we get a fair bias. But watch out in case it firms up, maybe some near pace, but we're hoping for a fair bias again on Saturday. So important for these big race meetings across the three key factors to kick off this first leg of the quaddy. Some of these sprinters coming up from 1,100 metres to 1,200 metres, that's key for a couple of them. Stage of preparation, which sprinters are ready to peak and position and run in a closely matched high quality field you need to get the gun run. All right. Well, most of these ran in the shorts just a couple of weeks ago in the main form reference for the race. Let's have a look at the market as we head into the first leg of the quaddy. And there's the big grey Chautauqua. Pretty solid there at $3.20, rattling home in that race. English, well, there's another one that's always in the market at $5. In her time, early money fresh, clearly innocent. Another one back from the Queensland winter at $7.50 there. Ball of muscle, we know he's going to be tough on pace, but... Look, Mike's going to be really exciting to see this flashy grey Chautauqua back at Ramwick. Let's have a look at him. We love watching the flashy grey. He's Group 1 drama written all over him, isn't he? <laughs> Six of these runners come through this lead-up race a couple of weeks ago, so such an important form reference to look at. It's a fair tempo this day, we're 1,100 metres, so similar conditions, just 100 metres shorter. Ball of muscle, plenty of power and speed out in the lead, just inside of Redzel, who's eventual winner. English, three wide, no cover the whole way. Nieta from the box seat, a couple sticking on from the back. And where's your tackle, Stu? <laughs> oh, he's doing what he does. He's out the back winding up. Got to love his last 200 metres. Red Zell off and gone here. What do we make of these others? Yeah, great runs. I think a couple probably don't want the 1,200 metres. Chautauqua definitely wants the 1,200 metres. His surge, his final 200 metres is enormous. Oh, it was massive, wasn't it? Well, look, one of these horses that if you're only tuning in for the spring, you might have missed the most unlucky horse in Australia over the Brisbane Winter Carnival. We're speaking here of In Her Time. And look, let's have a look at one of these replays from the winter because this is just a great horse. This has to be the unluckiest winter of group <laughs> racing in Australian history. She was wide no cover every single start she went up there. She was three wide no cover behind Red Zell start before this, which obviously ties in the form we just looked at. But this is a great group one race to Stradbroke, obviously. She's three wide no cover. If she ran midfield, it would be a great run. She has the audacity to kick, scrap, <laughs> fight. Oh, gee, she deserved to win that race. Oh, she did. And look, clearly innocent, really closing off late there. Another great horse. I mean, yeah, we're weighing up that shorts form versus some of that. So, look, let's have a look at these key factors, Mike. We've really got to split these up. We're looking for the gold. Take us through in the first leg. Yeah, two key form reference to look at. We're looking at these key factors. Big gold bar for Chautauqua. A few analysts, including Ronnie Duffersey, talked about the fact 1,100 metres was probably too short. They were right. The 1,200 metres on Saturday with a fair tempo is ideal. Across the page, can you believe in her times <laughs> drawn the inside after being three wide no cover for the whole season in the winter? So, big gold bar for positioning run there. Fell, swoop and take down some sneaky ones there. They usually perform better second up. All right, well, we know Chautauqua is going to be out the back halfway through this race. Let's have a look at those overall ratings to see where he makes it at the finishing post. And, well, he makes it, but just in time, in, in line within her time. So we've got an equal top Raiders here. Interesting one. Yeah, dead heat at the finish. One from last, one from the box seat. Which type of horse do you want to back? The consistent, <laughs> reliable box seater? or well, the one that gives you a heart attack every single time he goes around, and takedown's right there as well. But choosing between those three, we'll pick one of the top rows, we'll pick the one at better odds, we'll pick the one in the box seat, 
and we'll back her each way because she's so consistent, she's so reliable, she's a great each way bet. She's a great place bet as well if you like those type of bets. So put her in, in, in for the best bet. And those top few batters for Quinella, Chautauqua and Takedown will be around the mark as well. All right, a little bit of better luck this time in for trainer Ben hope. Smith within her time to kick things off for the quaddie this weekend. Let's have a look at the second leg. It is the Group 1 Epsom over the 1,600 metres. And, well, let's say it's a race that punters have really got a handle on the last few years. I think no double-figure odds for about the last six years. So punters really on the mark here. And happy clapper. I mean, is it his destiny this weekend? He was fourth in the race last year. He's run second in the last two Doncaster. But look, whatever he does, he's going to have to be good to overcome Waller's five horses and Egg Tart. She's been the story of the race. Will she run after this eye infection? So much drama. Vets disagreeing. Waller giving her absolutely every single chance to get into the field. A big factor on the Saturday. Let's have a look at the way the race sets up. The Group 1 race, one of these feature races on Saturday, 1,600 metres. The famous Randwick Mile, a handicap. Don't you love it? Fair tempo, good track, fair bias. Hopefully none of these runners have any excuses whatsoever. So across the three key factors... You need a horse that handles the Randwick Mile. It's pretty obvious in these Group 1 races. And also, you need a horse that needs to beat the handicapper. So scope and progression is important too. Well, it's usually a great betting race, the Epsom, one of the feature mile races at Royal Randwick in the country. We've usually got big fields, but we're down to 12 this, this weekend. So happy clapper, $3.10 favourite. That's the odds that Winx won when she won this race only two years ago. Can you believe it? Egg Tart there at $5.50. Will she run is the big question. Tom Melbourne, well, bossy engaged, three wins on him from, from six rides, so can he do the magic there? Coming through has come back really well. Fox play, she just chases hard, no winks today. Sound proposition, but look, happy Clapper might. He's short enough for this big race. Yeah, he's pretty short. He's pretty good as well. And this next <laughs> replay, Group 1 over the mile with the best form references in the globe. We'll have the ratings analysts salivating. Red excitement going way too hard out in the front this day. Fox play easing to the outside. Happy Clapper on her outside, travelling much better than a pretty good horse on his rear end. This is a big run, Stu. This is a big run, and one thing we've got to look at here is, is the margins. If no Winx is in this race, have a look back at these margins back from Happy Clapper. He's dead set one a group one by four <laughs> or five lengths. He's absolutely smashed them. He's absolutely flying this preparation. Look, Fox Play can't beat him on that run, surely. All right. Well, look, let's have a look at Waller's... Well, Waller's interesting runner this week. Is she going to run Egg Tart? One thing we've got to ask ourselves is, is she up to Group 1 standard? This replay says yes. Absolutely says yes. We know she's over Group 1 standard over a trip, but this is 2,000 metres. Not too much further than the 1,600 metre mile. Look, she's back in the pack. She's not getting much room in the red and green there. You think she might run on for third or fourth. A Group 1 quality run that you might back her next time for. But she gets out, she winds up, and she hits the line like a pretty good mare as well. Yeah, Karen McAvoy had a few troubles there, but once she's out, love the way this horse just wanted to win. Great win. Can you say Winks like, or is it a bit, <laughs> bit early, maybe? Bit early, but there's a lot of pundits out there saying she is. Let's have a look at these key factors, Mike. We've got to split them in the Group 1 Epsom. Yeah, happy clapper. You can't knock him at the Ramwick Mile, but there's no big kickers because his form's at that track and distance, so you kind of know how he's going to perform in that as well, so it's all about his form rating. Egg Tart's the one with improvement. Up in distance to the track. The 1,600 metres at Randwick is so much better for her than a firm, fast 1,300 metres at Rose Hill, which was her last start. Plus, she's the four-year-old with plenty of scope and on the rise. Coming through, he's got some scope as well. And sound proposition, don't forget him, he's unbeaten at Randwick. All right, so two yellow yolks there for Egg Tart. <laughs> None for the favourite happy clapper. Let's flip up the ratings here and see what we get. And, well, Egg Tart on top. 11.5 just ahead of happy clapper. Little margin back there to coming through Tom Melbourne, but Look as though it's one of the favourites races here, yeah. Mike. Two stinky egg jokes. This is over <laughs> easy. Egg Tart's the winner from Happy Clapper. The best two horses in the race. So many people are touting these two horses on social media. Really excited. I just hope she turns up. Yeah. It's going to be a great race. Egg Tart, the best bet for us. And put those two in a quinella. They're great horses. They're Group 1 horses. This is going to be a great race. All right, sticking with the favourites there in the Group 1 Epsom. There's a look at the first two legs at the big meeting this weekend at Ramwick. Stick around. We'll wrap up the last two after the break. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. As we get stuck into the quaddy, we're up to the third leg at Royal Randwick this weekend, and it's another Group 1 race. It's the Metropolitan over the 2,400 metres. Mike, it's a staying test of the day. Definitely not a vintage field, though. Feels like a bit more of a provincial championship or something like that, a provincial cup. 
But Waller, I mean, he's here in this race. He's had four in the Epsom. He's got a few here. I mean, there's trainers in this race like Waterhouse, Hickmont. They know how to train a stayer. And one man there, Darren Weir, He's looking for his first success in this race as a trainer. Yeah, you framed it up perfectly. Really good staying trainers in this race, and we're just desperate for a good strike rate in yeah. Sydney, isn't he? Let's have a look and see if Big Duke's suited in this Group 1 2,400-metre feature off the back of the Epsom. What a great day on Saturday. Look, the tempo should be fair, but there's only a couple that go forward, so sometimes the tempo can slack it off in these staying races. But hopefully, given it's a Group 1, the pressure will be on. Conditions good three. Bias fair, we hope. Maybe firming up towards the end of the day, but hopefully they're giving it a little bit of water. Across the three key factors, the mile and a half over the Group 1 race has to be a key factor. Stage of preparation. Some of these stayers coming into this race ready to peak. Some already have peaked. And weight. There's one particular weight switch you've got to factor in. All right. Well, let's have a look at the market for the Metropolitan. Walla had a big hand in the Epsom. He's got another big hand here in this race. And there's his charges on top. Libran, well, he rattled home to beat Antonio Giuseppe last start. They're both on the top line of betting there at $5. Life left ordinary, less ordinary, rounded out the stable trifecta there in the Kingston town. And here's a few of these from the staying trainers. We've got Big Duke there at $6. Foundry at $7, up from Melbourne. And Broadside, the bold front runner for Gay. I mean, Mike, the market says this is a wallet trifecta here. He's such a good <laughs> trainer of stayers. The Kingston town was a couple of weeks ago, over 2,000 metres. He used that race as a lead-up to this race on Saturday. And he scored the top four. Look, Libran was massive odds this day. Back in the pack in the light blue, finishing really hard. Antonio Giuseppe was ridden to win in the yellow and black. He comes to the outside and looms up. Who shot the bomber on the inside of him in the orange with Life Less Ordinary 2 in the white and green? Yeah, well, Antonio Giuseppe, I mean, we were on him this day. He was uh, keeping our quaddy alive. <laughs> He hit the front here, thought it was all home, and Libran, I mean, this horse really surprised a few people this day up the inside. Yeah, only second up, don't forget, from Libran. So a huge performance to finish so hard over the last 150 metres. Who shot the bum and sticking on? Yeah, all those four Waller runners obviously going quite well. All right, yeah, he's going well, isn't he, Waller, this time. Look, life less ordinary. Here's a horse that one year ago to the day was running at Ascot in the UK. And look, we haven't seen this horse past 2,000 metres, Mike. Here's a replay of a race over 3,218 metres. I mean... This is a good win. Yeah, never mind the Metro. What about the Melbourne Cup? I mean, this is a Wallace stayer down the limit weight with progression, more improvement up in distance. He's in the white colours and the black hat. You find out over the last furlong in these testing British staying races whether he's got stamina or not. He keeps lifting, he keeps finding the line, he runs through the line. He's a really genuine stayer, this horse, who's much better suited over 2,400 metres. Look, good win, but, you know, I've had a look through this form. That second horse there, Noble Silk, that's a non-winner. <laughs> yeah, I think you might have caught me out there. I think he's won like three or four races, too. So, yeah, non-winner, so, but still a good stay-up. All right, so we've got to weigh all that up. Let's see if the key factors can steer us into a winner here in the Metropolitan. Yeah, looking across those three key factors, looking at the first key factor, there's so many horses that love the distance of 2,400 metres, so you can see some gold bars there for distance. Horses suited up in the, to the 2,400 metres. Antonio Giuseppe potentially not quite as good as the others. He's placed over the distance, but does he have the progression like the others do? Across the page to scope, to wait... Life less ordinary, big switch in the weights, he's much better suited. All right, so it looks as though only Waller and we're getting the gold there, or mostly Waller, I must say, as we have a look at the overall ratings here. And, well, let's see, that's one, two, three and four for Waller. So, look, the boys in the office, they think that this is going to be a Waller benefit. Yeah, big Duke foundry, big chances if they turn up at their best, but on what rates, weight, ratings and everything else, a bit of a tongue twister, it's just Walla, Walla, Walla for us. We're going to go with Libran. He's got to be the best bet. He's in form. He was second up there. He's going to improve third up for sure. And life less ordinary. He's right in this race as well. They're both 556 bucks. Good enough to back them both. All right, Libran there. Yeah, I mean, look, he just looks like he's right what ready to is. peak for this race. Waller holds the key there in the Metropolitan. Let's wrap up the last leg of the quaddy this weekend. We go from the group races to the tab.com.au handicap over the 1,400 metres. And old boy, my namesake, Issa Rich, he just kept it alive two weeks ago. He blew out the quaddy at massive odds again. What a marvel. I mean, he just keeps running a huge race. I had him on top, but the key factors didn't. We, we missed, missed out. out there. But one thing we know in this race, sweet serendipity for Cathy O'Hara. She's just going to run him along in front. Yeah, and that won't suit Issa Rich. So will we leave him out again? We'll find out soon. Finishing off with the lower grade, 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 grade race, 1,200 metres, benchmark 90. The thing about this race, it characterises it, like Stu said, there's that leader going forward. It could be a strong to fair tempo, setting up the surge horses at the end. Good three and fair bias so the, the conditions as well. So across the three key factors to finish us off in these quaddy legs, some of these horses better suited stage of preparation. Positioning runs important too, but surge is the big one. 
which horse can hit the line off that strong tempo. All right, we will find out on Saturday. Let's have a look at the market here and hope everyone's still alive in the last leg of the Quaddy this weekend. And Tango Rain, he's racing so consistently as preparation. Favourite there at $3.80. I thought so. We ran the extra yards wide when fresh. Sprite adding a little touch of quality here for Gary Fraser. Fresh at $6. And then there's Dagny, Improvement, Echo Effect. They all come through that ISO rich race. And, well, no ISO rich in that market until right down the bottom at 17 bucks. Yeah, just a little nibble, I think, Stu, <laughs> which is probably you and your fan club, I reckon. Let's have a look at his win last start. Why not? Look, there's so many replays of these races on Saturday with so many runners coming through them. So lots of consistent form lines you can pick through on a Friday night and Saturday morning to find your winners. Iso Rich in the lead, fighting on. Improvement on his outside. I thought so, four and five wide. The thing about this race is there was no tempo through the back, so the leaders were suited. He, he was suited, but look, they're all just attacking him here. He just keeps lifting Iso Rich. A couple of those out wider there, if you know, that they're right around and you're saying a few things could change around with the tempo. Yeah, so hard to read this race there. So Plush out wide, who won so well next start. The horses at the back are only two and a half, three lengths behind impossible race to read. It could turn, be turned on its head on Saturday. All right, well, one form line that we've just got to look at here. It's got class all over it, is Sprite. We're going to go back to her resuming last preparation. And there's some quality horses in here. We've got Global Glamour out in front and Fox Play charging. But Sprite, she runs home well. It's, she runs home well. Look, this is a really important run to look at. It's first up, last preparation. It's Ramwick 1200 metres. It's a good track and it's a strong tempo. So everything is completely the same for her on Saturday, we think. There's Fox Play in front of her, who's got a massive finishing surge over the last 150 metres. She chases so hard, and Sprite stick with, sticks with her pretty much all the way, Stu. Oh, absolutely. Charging home out wide, and I think you've just said it there. All tempo-related this weekend. Key factors, that's going to show us, isn't it? Yeah, let's see where Sprite ends up and these other runners on Saturday. And Tango Rain, look, he was leading on Rose Hill Gardens, and maybe Ramick's not quite ideal for him. His finishing surge may be slightly weaker compared to the rest. We'll find out. He will be tested on Saturday. I thought so. Big turnaround for position and run. He's a horse that can over race. If he gets some cover, the tempo's honest. That ideal barrier will make a big difference for him. And there's the big finisher, Sprite. First up, inside barrier. You know she's going to smash the line. All right, so two of the favourites there, but not the favourite with the gold bars. Love a horse that just hits the line like Sprite. Let's have a look at these overall ratings in the last leg of the Quaddy on Saturday. And, well, there she is on top. Bit of class at the top with Sprite. But there's a lot of that form in behind. I thought so. Dagny, Improvement, all coming from the same race. But it's Sprite on top here in the ratings. Yeah, nice to see a couple of lower trainers get one over Waller here, isn't it? <laughs> Waller down to third in the ratings there. Sprite, I thought so. Both really good horses with plenty of upside, plenty of potential. Suited over the Ramwick 1,200 metres on Saturday. Sprite's better odds. Sprite's a better rating. We've tipped Sprite before. If people follow the key factors, I know she's a favourite of ours. So hopefully she does well by us on Saturday from the inside. Barry running home late. I thought so right up there as well. We've been successful with this Quinella. Let's put another one of those on as well. You have. It's been going well. And Sprite, yeah, look, looks a great bet there in the last. I like your confidence. Let's wrap it up as we've got to do here for the Quaddy. We got off to a great start last weekend with Ace High saluting at $10. Then that Daisy Dixie Quinella. I mean, that just had a ring about it all week. But like most, we got blown out by trapeze artist in the Golden Rose. Yeah, it was close, wasn't it? But big returns with the best bets, which is important. And look, with being a bit conservative in the Quaddy this week, you could find one leg to go chips in on them if you like any of these legs, but we'll play a conservative one and you choose which leg to zoom in on. Race six, Chautauqua from the back, in her time from the box seat, take down the Valley Runner. Race seven, you could just leave Egg Tart and Happy Clapper in if you want. Tom Melbourne, the much maligned Tom Melbourne. <laughs> Savile <laughs> Rose, the big roughy. He was lost up the straight at Flemington. He's 60, 70 to one, so throw him in. Race eight, there's the three Waller runners we like. Race nine, Sprite. And all those horses that finished alongside each other last start, apart from Isa Rich. Sorry, Stu. OK, he's out. Oh, well, look, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a conservative quad. I mean, it's going to be a big pull no matter what at Randwick this weekend on a big feature race day. You've got to know how your horse is going to handle that Randwick rise. The only way to do that is to check out all the feature race guides that are going to be online on Friday. That's what you need to find out this weekend. Good luck with your punting on the quad, and we hope you jag a big piece of it at Randwick for Epsom Day. Cheers. See you out there.